We have a police officer now who is on trial after leaving a handcuffed woman in a police car when it was parked on the train tracks. A train slammed in the car, but thankfully the woman survived. So officers put a woman handcuffed in the back of a police car and parked that car on active railroad tracks. How does this not lead to a massive lawsuit? So we are in the great state of Colorado where officers get a call that there's a woman who is waving around guns in a road rage incident. They see a car that fits the description, they pull that car over, and inside is Gerani Rios Gonzalez. Now, she is alleged to have been involved in this prior gun incident. So, Officer Jordan Stanky then handcuffed Rios and placed her into the back seat of a patrol car. Now, it wasn't her car, it was another officer's car. Now, that police car happened to be parked on active railroad tracks. Now, the suspect is handcuffed and locked in the back of the car. A few minutes later, a train comes rolling by, but police didn't have enough time to respond, and the suspect was locked in the back of the car. So this is what happened when the train came rolling through. Police had stopped Yareni Rios Gonzalez in connection with the road rage incident. Before the crash, you can hear officers as they began looking for a suspect. All right, disturbance with weapons, Highway 85 northbound, heading into LaSalle area. Female was tailgating and then pulled a gun on RP. This is a patrol car Rios Gonzalez was eventually put into as she was put into custody. Her hands are out the window at the time. She's out of the vehicle. The patrol car was actually on the railroad tracks, but it's not clear why it stopped there. Then the fast moving train smashes into the unit. She's leaving from the head. Uh, we got a injured party in my unit. Mm -hmm. She's leaving from the head. Bleeding serious? Yes. Very serious. The patrol car was hardly recognizable after the crash. Female is semi conscious. Somehow, Rios Gonzalez survived despite life-threatening injuries. So now the suspect goes to the hospital because she's just been in a massive car crash with the train. So it's, it's like if she has to go to the hospital. The officers, they now have to face justice because the DA's office said what you did was reckless. This was crazy, putting a handcuffed suspect in the back of a patrol car on the active train tracks. You're going to have to answer for that. Now, the suspect was also charged because the police found the gun in the back of her car, but the suspect pleaded no contest to, I think, a misdemeanor and received 10 hours of community service. Now, the crazy part about that is that the judge who was sentencing the, the suspect in this case, who, who I think shouldn't have been charged at all, but the judge who, is, who sentenced the suspect, he made it very clear that what happened to this suspect was negligent and reckless, alluding to that the officers should pay a price, but also that Miss Rios, Rios Gonzalez, should also get some bank. Listen to what he says. We've obtained a transcript in which Judge Vicente V. Hill gave a lengthy apology to Rios for the train collision. Judge V. Hill said, in part, it's clear to me that the system failed with respect to you, with respect to that. I hope things are going better for you now. And so I just wanted to express to you, I'm really, really sorry that happened. No one should be in that position from my perspective. Just incredibly reckless, negligent, stupid behavior, however you want to put it. It's extraordinarily rare for a judge to apologize ever. Once in a while, on a dismissal, on a case that should never have been filed, the judge might say a few words of apologetic, of apologetic nature. But like this, this is an unusual situation. Now, the DA did what DAs do. He charged the officer, charged everybody, right? He's charging everybody. So there are a couple of officers who are charged. Two of them are still going to go through their stuff. But Officer Jordan Stanky went to trial. She's the one that actually put the handcuffs on homegirl and walked her to the car. Now, the DA had to prove that the officer was reckless. What does that mean? So meaning that a reasonable person would have known that there was a risk of death or serious physical injury from placing a handcuffed suspect in the back of a parked patrol car that's locked on train tracks. And so not only do you know that risk, she would have had to also disregard the risk. 
Here's what happened in court. At the time, she elected to place Yurani Rios Gonzalez in the Platteville patrol car parked on the railroad tracks instead of her own patrol unit that was safely parked to the west of the railroad tracks. Officer Jordan Steinke is facing two charges, felony attempted reckless manslaughter and misdemeanor reckless endangerment. Steinke taking the stand Tuesday, arguing that she did not see any reflective signs or gates indicating a railroad crossing at the time of the incident. It was incredibly dark. I was miles outside of my jurisdiction. I was fairly certain that that particular stop was going to end in a gunfight. I never in a million years thought a train was going to come plowing through my scene. Claiming she would have not put the suspect in the vehicle if she knew it was parked on a railroad. Now, the state's prosecution was simple. Their argument was simple. Is that a reasonable officer in her position should have known that placing a handcuffed suspect in the back of a locked patrol car where they couldn't get out was dangerous, especially if it's on railroad tracks, and that officers are trained to look and identify their surroundings before acting. And this officer is a veteran officer and is well trained. Now, the officer claimed that this was just a horrible accident, and she had no idea that there was this risk. But, but critically enough, she admitted to seeing the train tracks and seeing the signage but didn't perceive them as a risk. So the judge took all that in, and this is what he ruled. And this morning, a Colorado judge finding the female officer who placed her in that doomed car guilty of misdemeanor charges of reckless endangerment and assault. Court finds she did act recklessly, and the guilty verdicts on those counts will enter. So the officer was obviously fired because she's now convicted of a crime, and she was sentenced in this case to probation. Here's that video for you. I wish I could see her eye to eye right now. For that, I am so sorry. As a police officer, I never intended for another human to come to harm under my watch. I feel very much responsible for what happened to you that night. And I accept the court's decision to hold me accountable. My hope is that everyone who was involved with this situation can find healing and happiness. Now, as part of her sentence to 30 months supervised probation, which is actually about two and a half years, she will also have to do 100 hours of public service. Steinke said to the court she plans to use this experience to educate law enforcement officers about the dangers of parking on railroad tracks during traffic stops. So for the victim, obviously we got a civil lawsuit. Obviously she's searing on the theory of these cops were negligent and that is a rock solid no brainer. Any lawyer who she goes to and says, I want to sue the states for negligence, She's going to win, right? You got the cops being convicted of recklessness, which is essentially a heightened degree of negligence. They, they got the cops. The two judges, two judges have said the cops were obviously negligent and reckless. They got that. So I don't think there's any doubt this because we're not talking about if this woman's about to get paid. We're talking about how much she's getting paid. Um, the civil trial is still ongoing. And I think the issue now is because I think the state has a $5 million policy, and I think she wants more than the $5 million policy, so we'll see. We'll, we'll see what, what, where it goes. But uh, obviously, $5 million is where we start at. We are starting at $5 million, right? It's not, but you know, we're negotiating under five. No, no, $5 million is where we start. It's whether you got to put more money on top of that. Does the state really want to go to a jury trial with this? With all this evidence? It's like, it's a no-brainer. But let me know how you feel in the comment section. Should this woman get $5 million plus, or do you guys think she should get less? Because let's not forget, this is a windfall for her. But, you know, she was in that car. she got horrific injuries. Um, she had some brain injuries, too. So I, I think you got to pay. I think you got to pay. But I've been wrong before. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe, do like great YouTube stuff. Let me know how you feel in the comment section. My name is Nate the Lawyer, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Peace.